Hey, what's going down everybody? It's your boy David and I'm coming at you with another edition of the Free Play Mode E3 wrap up and in this segment we are going to be dealing with the Bethesda games and last year they brought the heat, they brought the rain, they brought the thunder, they rolled out Fallout 4 and Doom which were monster monster hits if you're not playing Doom I highly suggest you go do so but how did they do this year? In my opinion, I felt the, that they were more muted and subdued, that they didn't have that much to show off. Everything they showed off this year was more of an update or an upgrade to an existing series. So let's get into what happened during the E3 Bethesda Games Conference. Uh, it started out with uh, some pregame show stuff with Morgan Webb and Adam Sessler hyping up past Bethesda games successes and before the show started they did announce that Dishonored 2 will be coming out on November the 11th for the Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and the PC. First thing right off the jump before any words were said by any Bethesda games people they showed a teaser trailer to a new IP that they're doing called Quake Champions. It is an arena based game no actual gameplay was actually shown during this, but the teaser did look very good. And then the uh, software director from id, Tim Willits, came onto the stage to talk about the game a little bit. It is going to be an arena-based game, as I said, sort of like Quake 3 Arena. And he went on to discuss Quake's association long-running with the origins of esports and how QuakeCon is one of the biggest places that you can still play Quake competitively. Uh, he did go into a little bit of details in regards to Quake Champions and that it will be exclusively for the PC and that it will have unlocked frame rates at 120 Hertz and the characters in the game will have individual attributes and playstyles. so that's it for Quake Champions. They did announce that they will be T showing off more of the game at QuakeCon in August. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Peter Hines came out next, talked about the free-to-play card game uh, that he spoke of last year, Elder Scrolls Legends. It's a deck-building game akin to Hearthstone. I'm not much into these games, so for all you guys out there who were expecting me to explain and delve more into this, you're going to be very disappointed because I do not understand card games at all like the last card game I really played was Magic the Gathering and that was back in college but if you're very interested in this game you can sign up for the beta at BethesdaGames.net and it will be coming to the PC iOS devices and Android devices uh, next up uh, the head of Bethesda Game Studios talked about the success of Fallout 4 and what a monster it was and he essentially announced add-ons, official Bethesda add-ons for Fallout 4, such as the Contraptions add-on, which will allow you to add things like conveyor belts and sorting machines and things of that nature. And it is coming next week, which I assume is Tuesday. And next, he have announced the Vault Tech Workshop. And this one will allow you to build your own vault. You'll have to excavate it, clear it of any monsters, put down any stuff you want down there and you can even run your own experiments on vault dwellers in this new uh, add-on and that's coming in July and the final add-on they announced that is coming from Bethesda is coming in August and it's called Nuka World no specific date no specific details were given on this but it did look very interesting in the trailer and they also did announce new updates for Fallout Shelter coming soon to iOS and Android devices. New quests, new locations, new characters. And it is also coming to PC and that's happening in July. They moved on to uh, Skyrim Remastered, the worst kept secret in the world. Everybody knew this was coming since they showed off the demo, the tech demo for the Xbox One way back in 
2013 they finally made it official and it's coming to playstation 4 and xbox one and it will be able to use pc mods like fallout 4 can on the consoles uh next up arcane studios rafael colantano spoke of uh dishonored and what a thrill it was to work on the game and that he was working on a new ip they did show off the trailer for it and it looked very interesting it's a psychological thriller it takes place in the near future in the year 2032 it's first person has sort of a groundhog day vibe to it if you've never seen the movie with bill murray i suggest you go see that right now to know what i'm talking about it has a mixture of guns and melee weaponry, it takes place in space primarily aboard a space station and the title of the game is going to be called Prey. So the character has mind bending abilities and it's up to use to use your mind bending abilities, melee weapons and guns to survive in this psychological horror slash thriller that is coming out for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC sometime in 2017. Next up, Marty Strat came on the stage and started talking about Doom, and he explained how the Doom Snap Map will be getting free updates for all platforms that it's on, that's PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4, no need to worry about paying for those, as I said, they will be free, and new updates will include props, objects, weapons, items, logic, and backdrop locations, so you'll have more variety in that, that regard and the ability to create true single player experiences like you they had a a splash screen up there like a little teaser where the guy was firing a weapon into a koa demon and it was displaying hit points lost on a koa demon which makes me believe you can make your own sort of RPG-ish first person shooter akin to Borderlands but set in the Doom universe I thought that was very interesting they also talked about re releasing new multiplayer modes and the first of the premium DLC map pack is coming with three new maps new weapon new demon new gun and new armor and look for that to be coming down the pipe pretty soon and for all of you who have not played doom yet starting today uh, they announced that the first level will be free during e3 on all platforms to download so definitely get on that if you don't have doom or you are very curious about wanting to try it out. Next they had the head of Zenimax Studios, Matt Freer, talking about the Elder Scrolls Online on consoles and that it is the biggest game in terms of MMOs on consoles. Uh, they showed the splash screen and highlight video for Elder Scrolls Online and they said on June 23rd they will be launching internationally in Japan so for all you people who are in Japan you'll finally be able to experience what everybody else has been experiencing in the Elder Scrolls Online. Then they announced the uh, Dark Brotherhood DLC match pack, map pack, well gameplay pack excuse me, launching on this coming Tuesday and they did show the Dark Brotherhood DLC gameplay trailer and it looked very good. They did add assassination animations and they also announced the One Tamriel uh, initiative in that instead of beginning and being confined to a certain part of the world in Elder Scrolls Online beginning this fall, once you get out of the tutorial, you can freely explore wherever you want, you can play with anyone, you can go anywhere from the start of the game. So that's very, very interesting. And next up, they announced uh, Bethesda VR. and Fallout 4 and Doom are available to be played at the show, so if you are at E3, you can play those two games in Bethesda's VR booth. And coming officially to the HTC Vive in 2017, if VR lasts that long, Fallout 4 will be appearing on that platform. So for all three of you who own an HTC Vive, you'll be getting a AAA quality game in 2017. And the next up, which was uh, the final thing shown uh, in terms of gameplay and trailers, was Dishonored 2. They did show some lengthy gameplay footage, starting with some set pieces, and they explained the details of the world and how dynamic it is, and how it's built out around a new dynamic 
engine called the void engine and it has dynamic lighting and dynamic weather and dynamic uh all kinds of dynamic stuff including dynamic ai which means the characters have daily routines and they will actually go that they will actually go about throughout the course of the game so it's not as if these characters are static things that just exist in the world they actually are living breathing things that actually like you and me have jobs have homes that they will go to will only appear at certain times throughout the day etc and things like that so i think that's a really cool feature and the stages look to be built more vertical with a more vertical gameplay in mind because they did show off the character like climbing rapidly up toward the roof areas of various buildings so i do like games that do take account into account verticality and because it offers you more paths to explore within that game's world rather than being stuck on the ground level of things and then they showed off the gameplay trailer and i'll admit uh dishonor 2 is shaping up to be a, a blockbuster is shaping up to be a monster and after the trailer was shown uh the head of vp marketing uh pete hines came out and he spoke about the Dishonor 2 Collector's Edition, and you better jump on that fast because, like the Fallout 4 Collector's Edition, it's going to move fast, especially once you learn what's in it. They have a replica of Kovu's mask and the ring, and all pre orders, no matter which edition you do get, will have a free copy of the definitive edition of Dishonored, and that includes all DLC that ever came out for that game, and that's for all platforms Xbox one PlayStation 4 and PC so I want to know what you guys thought of the Bethesda e3 press conference did they live up to your expectations did they kind of let you down me personally I thought last year they brought the thunder the rain lightning everything they could have brought this year was kind of muted and subdued they only showed like two actual games and the rest was updates and upgrades to existing franchises even skyrim remastered it was like eh, i already invested about 200 hours in skyrim on one character and i have no desire to go back and do that again i know some of you will but me personally don't want to so let me know what you think in the comment section below and look forward to the next segment coming through after uh, Microsoft does their presser at 12.30 p.m. tomorrow. I'll be releasing that when I get home from work, probably about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this is David from the Free Play Mode, hoping to have a good evening. Peace, folks. I'm out.